Brother Marcel uh, will read the scripture text for us. Matthew chapter 6, verse 13, and Psalm 150. So Matthew chapter 6. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Psalm chapter 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound, praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance, praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals, praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Grace and peace to all of City Center family who worship here in this church and also at your home. Did you have a good holiday, uh, Lunar New Year's Day? Uh, since there are two New Year's Days in Korea, it feels like starting 2021 again. Though it's still the beginning period, the beginning season today, I want us to think about the end today. The beginning is always important in life, but the end is even more important. For example, in basketball, um, the closer is very important. We see so many times in baseball that though one team is dominating the whole game until two outs of ninth inning, but then the game reversed in the end. The same goes for football or soccer. Even if they dominate the game until 90 minutes, but the game can reverse during the extra time. The, the same is true of our work and relationships and even our ministry. Though you have a good beginning, but it might be useless if you have a bad ending. It has been always my wish and hope for the ministry that I want to be a minister with a good end. I want to finish this race of walking with God and my ministry well without any big problem or any scandal. I don't know how many pastors have had have a bad and shameful end, though their beginning was really good. So I want to become a Christian and a minister, Christian minister with a good end. However, what I want to say today is that it is the same in our prayer life. It is very important how you end your prayer. Today is the 14th sermon and the last sermon, finally, on the Lord's Prayer. Through today's message, I want us to see how the Lord's Prayer ends and how our prayer and faith life will end. The last part of Matthew chapter 6, verse 13 says, For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the conclusion of the Lord's Prayer. However, most of your Bible does not include this phrase. You can find it only in a footnote. In my Bible, it says in a footnote, some manuscripts add for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. There is so much to be said about the manuscripts of the Bible. So I won't go into detail today. Uh, but to put it simply, among various manuscripts of the New Testament, some of them contain this phrase while others don't. But if you were the people who decide what to include in the Bible, we call it the canon. The 66 books of the Bible, volumes that we have today. What would you usually do if this part was missing from the oldest and most authoritative manuscripts? You will not include it in the Bible. However, this part has been included in the canon 
because it does not violate the theme or the teachings of the whole Bible. And also, there are no errors in this phrase. In addition, since it enriches the meaning of Christian prayer, it has been always included, the part of the, no, uh, the Lord's Prayer, especially in a footnote today. So I think we better take a note of this part and read it carefully and meaningfully. The part we just read today, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This part is often called doxology, just we, the song we just sang. In Christian theology, it is a combination of the word doxa, meaning glory, and the word logos for logic or word. It means to offer all the glory and honor praise to God. So today I will deliver the message focusing on the background of this song called doxology and what it ultimately means. The background of praise. What is the context of the praise Today's, uh, of today's text. I hope you remember about what we have learned so far through the Lord's Prayer. Until now, we have learned six petitions in the Lord's Prayer. First, we learned three petitions for God, asking for God's name, God's kingdom, and God's will. And then we learned three petitions for ourselves, asking for daily bread, forgiveness of sins, and protection from temptation and evil. And then this is the final praise and adoration you should offer after asking all of them. In other words, it is not the praise that you offer after all the problems have been resolved or disappeared, but it is the praise while the pain and problem still exist and that the shadow of temptation and evil still come upon your life. In other words, this doxology, the song of praise, reflects that the fact that suffering still exists amongst us. Brothers and sisters, there are many different perspectives in the world to look at the problems of suffering in our lives. For example, Eastern worldviews such as Buddhism or Hinduism believe that the suffering can be considered as part of life and we have to embrace it rather than avoid it. Rather than actively resisting or trying to escape from it, we should treat it as our fate and we have to comply. Such implications are contained in the concept of reincarnation and social systems such as caste. On the other hand, how do you see pain and suffering in a Western worldview? You should consider it evil and you should escape and avoid it. Today, modern society is influenced by this Western worldview and says that suffering should be viewed as evil or unnecessary and so it should be avoided if possible. For example, in the past, people said that it is essential to go to the army to become a mature man here in Korea. But nowadays they say, do not go to the army if you can. The same goes for getting married, giving birth to a ch ch child and raising children. Our modern culture says to us, why are you trying to suffer? It is better to avoid it if you can. That is wisdom. Live for your own life. Avoid the suffering. We seek to be free from suffering these days, which was totally different from the ancient worldview. But Christianity answers the question of suffering differently. We do not accept it uncritically like what the Eastern worldview says, nor we do not believe that suffering should be avoided like what the Western worldview teaches to us. Christians sees suffering as evil, but at the same time, we see it as a tool 
to accomplish God's good purpose and plan. In fact, there is no worldview that deals directly with suffering like Christianity. Why? It is because God came into the world of suffering and he himself suffered. Because suffering is evil, God saves us from this suffering, but he save, uh, saves us not in a way that we avoid it, but in a way that confronts it. We affirm the reality of suffering and pain and take a positive perspective, an active perspective on solving the problem. The song of praise, the doxology given at the end of Lord's Prayer is a praise offered while fully reflecting this reality of our human lives. Jesus does not deny it by saying that there is no pain, but acknowledges the reality of pain, dominated and infested with evil. It is not a praise given in a situation where there is no pain or problem, but a praise in the midst of pain and trouble. This is the background and the context of the last part of the Lord's Prayer, the song of praise, the doxology. The meaning of praise. The last confession of the Lord's Prayer today says, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Here in English translation, it begins with expression for. For. The Greek word hoti was translated as for, which explains the reason of it. It is the very reason and conclusion of all six petitions. It tells us why we must seek his name, his kingdom, his will, for God and why we must ask for daily bread, forgiveness, forgiveness of sins, temptation and pro, uh, protection from temptation and evil. And the ultimate reason for all of that, it is because the kingdom, power and the glory rest in God. This is a prayer that asks for all things and finally, acknowledges that all things belong to God because he is the creator and the Lord of all things. Why? It is because we can rest only when we admit that the things we have tried so hard to gain are not actually ours, but his. We can truly rest when we acknowledge all his power and authority belong to him. The reason and purpose of this praise is to rest after praying for all of this. If you think they are yours, you will never rest. In order not to lose it, you have to be endlessly concerned about it and restless and you will make yourself busy. But if you think it's not yours, then you can lay down your tools and then you can finally take a rest. The last confession of praise means that you have prayed enough, then so let it go of it and rest because all things belong to him. You admit and acknowledge that God's lordship and sovereignty. Isn't it true in our, our life? If a pastor or elder in church thinks this church belongs to him, he cannot rest. You cannot give it up or put it down. But when you think that it belongs not to you, but to God, when you confess that the kingdom, the power, and glory belong to him, you can truly rest. You can see that when you look at the retired pastors around you who have pastored the church for decades, those who confess that the kingdom power and the glory belongs to God and acknowledge God's sovereignty while serving the church can rest comfortably even after retirement. However, 
those who used to think that the kingdom, power, and the glory belong to them cannot rest, will not rest comfortably even after retirement. The same is true for students taking exams and office workers submitting some reports. When you think it has gone, it has left my hand, there's nothing I can do now. You can stretch your feet and rest comfortably. However, if you worry about what to do, even after you submit it, thinking that it still belongs to you, you will never rest. That is the difference between those who confess that the kingdom, power, glory are in God and those who do not. If you have prayed enough according to the pattern and model of the Lord's prayer, you have to let them go. It's not on your hand anymore. It's, it doesn't belong to you. It's not yours. Recognize that the kingdom power and the glory belong to God alone and please rest at peace. That is what it tells us today. The text that shows this well in Psalm 150. Psalms, which means a song or a poem, consists of 150 psalms in total. And again, these 150 psalms are um, combined, recombined into five different volumes. Volume number one starts from Psalm 1 until Psalm 41. Volume number two from 42 to 72. Volume number three starts from 73 through 89 and four starts from Psalm 80 through 106. And the last volume, volume number five, starts from 107 until 150. And in the last, in the last psalm of each volume, there is a confession of praising to God. Psalm 150 we read today is the conclusion not only of volume number five, and also it is the conclusion of the whole book of the Psalm. As you, if you read the Bible of Psalms from 100, 146 through 150 are all made up of hallelujah Psalms, praising God, singing doxology and glory and honor, giving honor to him. And Psalm 150 is the final climax and conclusion of the whole book of Psalm. And here is a brief explanation of the contents of Psalm 150. If you read verse 1, it says, Praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty hands. The poet commands us to praise God where? Everywhere. In verse 2, he commands us to praise him for all reasons. In verses 3 through 5, he asks us to use every instrument in praising God in every way, in every means. And the last verse 6 says that everyone who has breath should praise God. This Psalm 150, it talks all about praising God and giving doxology to him. But today, rather than focusing on the each meaning of this Psalm 150, I want us to remember the important fact that it tells us today that every prayer must end with praise. And God will eventually bring all our prayers to an end with praise. Please consider the contents of the entire 150 Psalms. Not all the Psalms are filled with songs of praising God, thanking God, and rejoicing in God. And as I said last week, out of all 150 Psalms, 53 Psalms, over one third, are songs of sighs and lamentations. 
These are songs that contain confession of suffering, pain and sorrow, resentment and sigh before God. Nevertheless, the last song of Psalm, Psalm 150 is a song of praise and thanksgiving to God. It shows where the final destination of the prayer who passed through the long journey of the whole Psalms. It shows what the end of our prayer and the end of our Christian life will look like. And where it goes, everything, our prayer life, our Christian, our walking with God, ends with just one word, hallelujah. This is the confession of every Christian. And this is what we believe, that it all ends with hallelujah, praising God. And Eugene Peterson explains in the last chapter of his book, Answering God, the, the subtitle is the, the End of Prayer. He says uh, like this. No matter how much we suffer, no matter our doubts, no matter how angry we get, no matter how many times we have asked in desperation how long, prayer develops finally into praise. Everything finds its way to the doorstep of praise. This is not to say that our other prayers are, not, are inferior to praise, only that all prayer pursued far enough becomes praise. It does not mean that our prayer and our religious life are always joyful and happy life, but that it all goes toward praise and that everything ends with praise. Dear brothers and sisters, please take a look at your past prayers. Also look back on your life, your walking with God. In the past year, 2020, how many confessions of sighs and sorrows have you had in your prayers last year? How long was your religious life, Christian life, a series of pain and suffering, failure and fall? That's our reality. What about the new year, 2021? It would be nice if all our prayers would be answered in this new year and our relationship with God would become even deeper and our faith stronger. But the reality is maybe not. This year may be also a continuation of failures and sufferings. I heard yesterday um, the mother of our beloved sister Grace had a stroke and she's now in a hospital. Thankfully, she has passed the dangerous stage and is now being re recovered. But we as a family of God, as a church, please pray for her full recovery in your per personal prayer and also our public prayer. But that is the reality of our life. At the end, at the beginning of our new year, something unexpected can happen. This is the reality. We might still have pain and suffering this year and our financial situation will still be not perfect. And there'll be still unanswered prayer, but you know what? God won't let you end up like that. Though each step in your life will be a continuation of failure and pain, but the end of your walking with God will be different. Your prayer life and your Christian life will ultimately end with praise and thanksgiving to God. This is the promise of the Lord's Prayer. However, another thing to remember is that you don't try to rush to finish with praise. Sometimes it takes a long time for your prayers to end with praise. 
I will continue reading using Peterson's article. It says, this crafted conclusion for the Psalms tell us that our prayers are going to end in praise, but that it is also going to take a while. Don't rush it. It may take years, decades even, before certain prayers arrive at the hallelujahs, at Psalms 146 through 150, with their acrostic foundation in Psalm 145. Not every prayer is kept off with praise. In fact, most prayers, if the Psalter is a true guide, are not. But prayer, a praying life, finally becomes praise. Prayer is always reaching towards praise and will finally arrive there. If we persist in prayer, laugh and cry, doubt and believe, struggle and dance, and then struggle again, we will surely end up at Psalm 150 and jump up and say, Ankor, Ankor, Hallelujah. There are great prayers in the Bible. There is Hannah's prayer who saw a son, and Simeon and Anna's prayer who have waited for the birth of the Messiah. All great prayers have something in common. They all ended with praise. However, it sometimes took a lot of time to sing that song of praise. The same is true of us. We, all, we are all boarding on, on, on the train, starting at Psalm 1 and heading for the last Psalm 150. We are on a train. However, it may take months for some to arrive at the final station and years or even decades for others. Some of you may be in the station called Psalm 40 or the station Psalm 90, or you may also be near Psalm 140. Each of us may have different timetables, but we are all heading for the same final destination, which is 150 the song of praise, the doxology, according to God's timetable. The speed may vary, but keep in mind that the direction and final destination are the same. Dear brothers and sisters, this is the promise of the Bible to those who saw tears of prayer. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his saints, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but a, for a moment, and his favor is for a, for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes with the morning. It is our hope that though we might weep for the night, joy will come in the morning. Although our prayers are a series of tears and sighs, it is the hope, it is our hope and conviction that in the end, there will be an end. And that end will be full of praise and thanksgiving to God. If there is hope for today's believers living in COVID-19 situation, isn't it that this also has an end. The hope of life as a foreigner on this country is that there is an end to life as a foreigner here in this country. And there is home where I can return. By holding on to this hope, you can endure in today's suffering. Because there is hope, we can sail today looking at the port of hope. And if you know from today's passage that the end of our Christian prayer, the end of our working with God is praise, I recommend that you start a new prayer life. People who already know the end can start more confidently and courageously. Now that the Lord's prayer is over, Finally, your prayer life 
should not be over. The end of the Lord's Prayer should be the beginning of your new prayer life and your new walking with God. Because our end is another beginning. I will conclude today's sermon with a part of T.S. Eliot's poem called Little Gideon. What we call the beginning is often the end. And to, to make an end is to make a beginning. The end is where we start from. We shall not cease from exploration and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and, now, and know the place for the first time. This is the end. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we cry out. The kingdom and the power and glory is in you, is yours forever. Father, how many times, how, how hard we devote ourselves, devote, we put all the effort Try, try to get what we want. And we, our life was restless. But Father, we confess, after we pray to you, help us to confess that everything, everything, it all belongs to you. It is not ours. I cannot do anything with it because it was and it is and it will be yours forever. Father, help us to lay down what we wanted to grab and help us to give it all to you and help us to truly rest in peace. Father, all the powers, the kingdom and the glory is yours. May you be the king. May you be the Lord of all, all the universe. And especially we pray for our beloved sister Grace's mother who had recently had a stroke and still being recovered in hospital. Father, we ask all the power, the kingdom, and the glory is yours. Her life, her recovery, all the process that belong, they belong to you. Father, she is your daughter. She is your faithful servant. Father, strengthen her and help her to recover from all the weaknesses. And she may be even stronger than before so that her life will be used, continue to use as a channel of your blessing to, to proclaim the glory and the kingdom of, and the power, not only in this city, but all the, throughout the nations. Father, hear all the prayers of the family members and our church family and answer us. And in your perfect time, in your perfect way, Father, we believe you will never leave her alone like this. You, the end will be with full of praise and honor and thanksgiving to you. Father, help our church, help this family to taste and see and experience the goodness, the mighty, the power, the healing and restoration of our faithful father who is with us, who works in and with through us. Father, give us wisdom, give us patience, give us courage as we walk through the life as a foreigner or um, um, pilgrim in this life, in this country. Father, help us to be endure with a hope that it will all end with praise and honor. We give all the glory and honor to you because 
everything belongs to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.